James Kaufman, September 2nd, 2023, noon central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently in a geomagnetic storm. I believe that this would be from the canyon filament eruption. That would be the first impact that we should be expecting. They say that we're supposed to have a second and even maybe a third impact within the next 24 hours. Taking a look at the Boulder KP index, the last nine hours we've been in geomagnetic storm, but prior to that we had a geomagnetic disturbance. The Fredericksburg KP index. For the last three hours we've been in a geomagnetic storm. Prior to that we had six hours of geomagnetic disturbance. Now, using our estimated planetary index, our reinvention, the brand new index, we've been in a geomagnetic storm for the last nine hours. That topping out at a 5.33. And prior to that, we were in a geomagnetic disturbance for three additional hours. So we've had geomagnetic activity on our estimated planetary index for the last 12 hours. Headed to our college index. It's got a really big spike up there. A KP7. Followed by two KP6s. Nine hours of strong geomagnetic storm. This in indicates a G2 whereas the other storms are all G1 geomagnetic storms. Heading over to our GOES X-ray flux, we can also see that we've had a very strong M-class solar flare strike our GOES X-ray satellite. This happened right about 8 UTC time. It was a strong M3.32 magnitude solar flare. It was actually in M territory for over an hour, almost an hour and a half. Luckily, it was not directly Earth-facing, as we will soon see. All right, taking a look at NOAA's KP index breakdown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they've added some geomagnetic storms to the mix. Uh, we had six hours, according to their forecast, of geomagnetic storm possibilities today, which we did, in fact, have tomorrow. This would be starting at 7 p.m. tonight and actually going on from there for nine hours. We have nine hours of geomagnetic storm. G1 expected. That would be the second impact. That would be the M1.2 solar flare. Oh, yes. We have no atmosphere whatsoever left. These small solar flares are penetrating deep into our atmosphere and creating geomagnetic storms. All right, taking a look at our solar disk, we have a few sunspots, but believe it or not, the big M3.32 solar flare came from sunspot AR3413, right there on the limb facing the gas giants. We did discuss when these sunspots start to roll towards the limb and face these gas giants, they would become more complex and start to flare. And that exact thing has been occurring. The real problem is, is Earth is moving into a position where the central part of the sun will be gas facing, which means that Earth could experience some serious flaring and our shields are basically non-existent. Now, I wish I could make sense out of this. I've never seen such gargle. So, basically, we haven't really broken the space weather threshold for plasma all day long, right? See if we barely broke it here. We barely broke it here. But we've seen plasma at 25 centimeters cubed and no solar storm indicated. What has happened? Well, somehow we've had... Solar winds start the day out here at 520 kilometers per second, not plasma. Remember, solar winds don't come from a filament eruption. 
they don't come from a solar flare. They come from one thing, a crawl hole. And that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a canyon eruption, canyon filament eruption, followed by an M flare that was directly Earth-facing. So we should be seeing a rise in plasma, but we're not seeing that. We're seeing very strong solar winds that are impossible to explain that jump up as high as you know, 560 and then as low as 410 and then right back up to 565. This absolutely makes zero sense. This should not be a solar wind event. This should be a plasma event based on it being a filament eruption followed by a solar flare. This isn't only hard to explain. This is impossible to explain. Especially, like I said, when you see solar winds up here at the 560 range dropping down to 411 only to go back up to 566 and to drop down to 411 again unbelievable just so you guys know one one kilometer per second is over 2240 miles per hour so we're talking about some difference here again solar winds shouldn't even be at play we had no coronal hole that was earth facing until the ones they laid out last night for us. Those wouldn't have reached Earth yet. Where is the plasma with this event? And why are we seeing such strong solar winds? And why are these solar winds going from very strong solar winds to 411, 400 kilometers per second? This makes zero sense. This is impossible to explain to anyone because it's gargle. All right, finally headed over to STO, starting on the left at 193 angstroms. We'll just jump right to it. There is the explosion right there. It did look like a larger explosion than reported, but it was on the limb. We also have more activity coming from other sunspots as they get closer to facing the gas giants. Jump over to 171 angstroms. Let's get right to it. And there was the event right there. An M3.32, according to our GOES X-ray satellite. Although, I'm guessing the event was much larger and somewhat covered by the limb. With that said, expect more activity. Expect an increase uptick of solar activity. And that will, well, turn into an uptick of earthquake and volcanic activity here on earth god bless you guys share subscribe and always remember anything's possible in bizarro world